Tonight, all the heat in Cleveland will be centered on the mound. Bartolo Colon will be flame-throwing his fastball. The fireworks continue now on Fox Sports Ohio. Coming up tonight from downtown Cleveland, Fox Sports Ohio brings you Indians baseball. Interleague play continues tonight as the Houston Astros arrive for a three-game weekend series. Welcome to Jacobs Field, everyone. I'm John Sanders, working with my partner Rick Manning, as always. The Indians and the Astros have done very well so far, playing their opposite central divisions in interleague play. Both have played very well in interleague play. You'll see the Astros are 6-2, and two, where the Indians are 7-3. and three. The Indians have a little better batting average in interleague play, but the runs per game are just about even. Home runs, they've out home run 13-7, and stolen bases 10-7. And Houston is first in the National League in stolen bases, but the ERAs have been brilliant. Keep in mind the Indians won two out of three from the Astros last year in Houston. They'll play three this time in Cleveland. We get you set for game one with our Toyota Keys to Victory, brought to you by your Northern Ohio Toyota dealers and Toyota. Well, keep on streaking. The Tribe going for their third consecutive six-game winning streak behind Bartolo Colon. It's the Houston Astros, the leaders in the Central of the National League, against the Indians next, right here on Fox Sports Ohio. Just about set for the start of this three-game weekend series in downtown Cleveland. The wind blowing toward the right field corner under clear skies. It was quite stormy this morning, but those showers have moved on. Let's get you set for tonight's game by checking out, first of all, the Bryant heating and cooling weather. For ball game number one of this three-game weekend series, it's 86 degrees, not quite as warm as yesterday. 77% humidity, the wind from the west at 12. Hazy skies are forecast for the start of this interleague series. We mentioned the Astros playing very well this year, Rick. Last year, they did not like interleague play that much. They went 4-11. and 11. Well, they went 4-11, and 11, but I think the big thing is uh, offensively, they didn't have the bats in the lineup like they do this year. Moises Alou over here. They've got Carl Everett, and they have done a nice job, although, you know, Bagwell has been hurt a little bit and has spent some time on the disabled list. They have some guys having some terrific years. And Bartolo Colon is having a terrific year himself. His last three starts have been outstanding. That's all you can say, just one run allowed. Well, Bartolo Colon has been in a different world. I mean, he, look at the ERA, .35. And the amazing thing about Bartolo, he just gets better from the fifth inning on. And I think Bartolo, this offense for the Cleveland Indians, if they can concentrate and get a lead early, this guy has been awfully tough. Five complete games. He is one of the premier pitchers in baseball to this point in the season. And I think Mike Cargrove certainly got to think uh, awfully long and hard about taking this guy to the, uh, the All-Star game because he'd be a slam dunk for me. He will take the mound. The Indians take the field. We get set for Larry Durker's lineup. He wrote it down. We bring it to, cur to you courtesy of your Northern Ohio Ford dealers. The lineup begins with... Craig Biggio at second base, then Bill Spires playing third. Derek Bell is in right field. Jeff Bagwell, the first baseman. Moises Alou in left. Carl Everett is having a terrific season in center. Dave Clark is d aging tonight for the Astros. Ricky Gutierrez is the shortstop, and Brad Osmus will do the catching tonight for Houston. And Bartolo Colon is making his 16th start of the year, his 10th start right here at Jacobs Field, and his first ever appearance against the Houston Astros. A 7-4 record and a 2.53 earned run average. That is second in the American League. Hideki Arabu will be pitching tonight, who leads the American League in ERA. Only 85 hits and 110 in the third innings for Bartolo Colon, and the 87 strikeouts rank him in the top 10. And he is coming off a terrific start against the New York Yankees that Sunday night ball game where he went eight innings, three hits, did not allow a run. He walked five and ten strikeouts. But it'll be interesting to see he threw 139 pitches in that ball game. But this young man has got a rubber arm and he bounces back. The defense behind Bartolo tonight looks like this. Sean Dunstan gets the start in left field. It'll be Mark Witten in center, Kenny Lofton with the day off, and Manny Ramirez in right. Travis Fryman at third, Omar the shortstop, David Bell at second, Tommy at first, Alomar catching, and as you can see it highlighted, Omar the all-time leader in fielding percentage as a shortstop. That's impressive. Umpiring crew, well, they didn't go anyplace. They stayed here after working the two games with the Cardinals. It'll be Larry McCoy moving behind the plate, Mark Johnson at first, Chuck Merriweather at second, and Jim Evans will be the umpire down at third. That's kind of unusual that they would stay. Are they going to stay for the full five games, do you, you think? Know, I would think they would, yeah, because it's going to be tough traveling on a uh, on a weekend. Well, that's part of the problem with all these two-game series. Yeah, they may end up having to stay. And you know, they've got to get their Saturday night stay, or that plane ticket's going to be a little <laughs> more expensive. Exactly right. 
Colon set to go. Bartolo, 23 years old, six feet even, 185 pounds. Major article on the front page of the Plain Dealer today about Bartolo Colon and how he came up and got to this point in his major league career. He had a lot of doubts along the way, but it's worked out. Well, like he says now, he is afraid of nothing anymore, and I really feel that Bartolo believes he belongs at the big league level. The Indians set to take on the Astros. Houston matching their best start ever. 78 games into the season, 47 and 31. Hope you heard Larry Durker on Indians game time talking about the fact they're not playing as well right now as they have been. Coming off back-to-back -back losses to the Rockies in Colorado to start this five-game road trip, so they were not involved in interleague play, but they will be now. 331 average for Biggio, who leads the league and runs scored. The bouncer back to the box. And that's out number one. Well, that's good news. You keep Biggio off the bases. Let's check out the scouting report on Cologne. Well, we all know Bartolo Cologne with the explosive fastball. He's got the slider, also a changeup. Throws in the mid-90s and has topped out at 99 before. And Bartolo Cologne, if he can move it around and spot that fastball, his curves and sliders will just be devastating. Of course, the two-seamer that he's been working on has helped him as well. That, you're absolutely right. He and Jarrett Wright have really started working on that pitch in this last year. Obviously not quite as hard as the four-seamer, but with a little more movement. And that's, it's just a variety. It gives you a different look. That's what exa exactly what you want, say, to the left-hander. The ball that's going to go down in the strike zone, down and away, or down and into the right-handers. Spires at 284 on the season, had three hits against the Indians last year. Playing third base. Went two for eight in the two games in Colorado. One ball, one strike, the count on him. Terrific pinch hitter last year. Came up in the Milwaukee Brewers organization, was a number one draft pick. Signed as a shortstop. But has developed into a pretty good player to play third, second, short, utility guy. And he's a tough little player. The Astros, as you mentioned, really improving their offense in the offseason. They're third in the National League in batting with a 274 team average. They are second in run scored, and as we mentioned, they lead the league in stolen bases. They will run when they get aboard. Here's that breaking ball that looks at strike three. Boy, Anna Dandy just locked up the left-hander. It's tough when you can get left-handers that look at freezes on that breaking ball because they see such a good fastball. Fastball is in the mid-90s. You'll see the breaking ball on supervision at 84 in just an excellent location. Here comes Derek Bell. Maybe the Astros as a team have not been performing to the level, the, the level rather, that Larry Durker wants. But this guy has, working on a 14-game hitting streak, a career high for him. Facing Cologne. And he ran it up and in, got a piece of the bat for strike one. Well, here's a guy that last year really struggled for them. And now he has picked it up and having a very solid first half of the season. You see by those numbers, 10 homers, 56 runs batted in, the 327 average. He only had two hits in the three games in Houston last year. The Astros, if he takes strike two, will be headed to the ballpark at Union Station in a couple of years. They have signed an agreement to play in downtown Houston, moving out of the Astrodome when the new stadium is finished. 0-2 on Bell. The ball is bounced foul up the first baseline. You saw Sandy Alomar setting up on the outside part of the plate. And that time Derek Bell just stuck the bat out and stayed alive. That was a protect swing. You're absolutely right. Mike Cubbage is down at third and in the shadows it's Jose Cruz senior at first for Larry Durker. A chance to talk to Larry before the ball game. Former broadcaster making a terrific jump to the bench winning the division championship in his first year. Just misses low and away. Uh, see, he might have been fooled on that one because he has he has called pitches that were outside, even on the outside edge there. I don't know if he got blocked out. Look at him sitting inside. That's right at the knees. That's a perfect pitch. So Larry McCoy might have gotten blocked out on that call. Two outs, nobody on. Top half of the first inning. Out of play down the right field line. The things that Larry said to me. He used to play a lot of golf when he was a broadcaster. I said, "Did you get to play?" He said, "I can't play at all anymore." He said, "It's not like it used to be when I can show up at five o'clock." 
He said, I've got to be here at 2. I don't do anything, but he said, I have to be here at 2 o'clock. Well, he's the one that wanted to go down into that position. He was a broadcaster for quite some time, wasn't he? Yes, he was. There's a broken bat bouncer that veers to Bell, throws out Bell, Bell to Bell, and we'll go to the bottom of the first. Ready for the bottom half of the first inning. The Astros go in order in the top of the first. Mike Cargrove's lineup is set to go. A little change, as Rick mentioned. Kenny Lawson gets the night off. Let's check it out. Brought to you by your Northern Ohio Ford dealers. It begins with Omar Vizquel. Then Sean Dunstan getting the start in left. Manny Ramirez is in right against the left-handed pitcher. Tim Tomey hitting cleanup playing first, followed by catcher Sandy Alomar. Then it's David Justice DHing. Mark Whitten is in center field, followed by third baseman Travis Tryman. And then David Bell, the second baseman. Pete Short making the start for the Astros, making his 10th start. He is 4-5 and five and a 4-2-6 earned run average. Played with the Cincinnati Reds last year. They let him go in October, and then in January, he signed on with Houston. He went to camp as a non-roster player and winds up now in the rotation. Here's a guy the Indians were talking about last spring uh, for trade, but then he had arm problems and uh, just never developed. He actually came up in the Mets organization, drafted out of high school and went to school in Virginia in 1987, was with the Mets for about seven years before he went to Cincinnati. Had one huge year for the Reds. It was uh, in 1995, he went 18 and 7 for Cincinnati. No, not, one. not an overpowering pitcher. This Cal takes high for a ball three. Let's look at the scouting report for this 29 year old lefty. Fastball, curveball, the changeup. And I think the changeup will be his best pitch, but he's got to spot that fastball and he's going to have to move the ball around to keep the hitters off stride. This Kello for four last night, still hitting just under 300. Takes strike two. It's a full count. Three balls, two strikes. Shurik coming in with 32 strikeouts, 26 walks. So uh, he needs that control to be effective. This Kell is aboard. Well, let's set the defense behind Shurik. It's a Lewin left, Everett in center, Bell in, in right. Spires at third, Gutierrez at short, Biggio at second, Bagwell at first, and Osmus is catching. Dykstra will check in. Not Dykstra, Dunstan will check in with Jeff Newman down at third. Of course, Al Bumbry coaching over at first for Mike Cargrove here in the first game of this weekend series. The Indians then will wind up interleague play, although it's not going to seem that way against Milwaukee. What's that, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday? Correct. Correct. They have an off day Monday. As we head to the annual All-Star break, this Kell aboard, and Dun Dunstan pulls the foul between Newman and the third base bag. Let's take a look at our Carter Lumber Lumberman of the game. And it's uh, an honor that we have bestowed quite often on number 25. <laughs> yes, it is, Tommy. Right here in this ballpark has had a terrific year. Two for four last night with two bombs, three ribbies. Leadoff man aboard for the Indians. Vizquel on the 3-2 pitch walk. Here's Tommy. Down and in to Dunstan. The only at bat for Sean was when he got hit on the arm pinch hitting the other night. Boy, that was a stinger. Got him right in the forearm, and they have worked that. Get the blood out. I'm checking the move from Short. He is very quick to home plate as a left-hander, so I don't think they're going to steal many bases, but they may try and hit and run tonight. Just a reminder as he moves Vizcal back at first. Omar walking to start the game. The Indians 45 and 31. Their lead nine and a half games. The Astros are leading the National League Central Division by five. Biggest lead they've had this year. And when he's hit hard and into center field under the glove of a diving Gutierrez. So the Indians have the table set in the first inning. Modest three game hitting streak now for Sean Dunstan. Well, Sean stayed back nicely on this ball, just drives it into center field. A hard line shot past Gutierrez at shortstop. Gets the Indians the first hit of the ball game, and it's a good start to the bottom half of the first. Brings up Manny Ramirez. Manny only went two for 11 last year against Houston in the Astrodome. Did hit a home run in the dome. And he is working on a seven game hitting streak as he stands in, batting 393 with three homers and a dozen runs batted in. He has been on fire at home of late. Pitch to him is fouled away. No balls in one strike. 
Discover card is going to donate $500 to the local chapter of the Make-A-Wish Foundation for every Grand Slam in tonight's game. Two men on and nobody out for the Indians here in the bottom half of inning number one. Jim Tomey is on deck. That's hit hard down the left field line, but he's out in front and it's foul, so no balls, two strikes. Well, this is the first time I've seen Manny now. It looked like his front foot is open in that batter's box. Normally, he's uh, straight away or squared. He might be on that plate a little bit more and just check out his front foot after he gets in. It is open. He hit one down the right field line, and then this one he turns on. A high leg kick stays back, and gets his cock position, and it's a nice swing on the baseball. No balls, two strikes. Man's trying to make some noise early here in the bottom of the first inning. Get the Indians off and rolling against the Astros. It's inside for a ball. Two for seven against the Cardinals in that series. Scored three times and, of course, had five runs batted in, including a grand slam the other night. And his nice play at third, diving out his spires. He'll get an out. No, it gets nobody. Well, that's he, he saved a run. He saved the double going down the line. That's going to be a big hit for Manny Ramirez because Dunstan hustles into second base. It was a terrific play by Spires to just catch this ball. Look, he has a tough time getting up. He is extended to the utmost, and then he, sees it, he turns on that wrist. His only play he felt was at second base. And Dunstan hustling in gets Manny Ramirez ahead. It was a fine play, but it's now bases loaded and nobody out. With Jim Tomey coming to the plate. Tomey has hit safely in five straight games now. And hitting 333 this season with runners in scoring position. He's got the bases loaded and he swings and misses. Strike one. 338 season average, 21 home runs, including a pair last night. And now 66 runs batted in. Shork's the kind of guy that Jim's going to have to stay back and think, concentrate the other way. That first swing looked like it was a ball away. He tried to pull. Comes back on the inside corner and catches it for strike two. Well, that's a perfect pitch there. After the, I'm sure Jimmy looking away. Watch this pitch inside edge. That's like the perfect pitch. You got to give credit on, uh, to Shurik on that one. York in his last outing beat Cincinnati three to one. Went six innings, gave up just one run. He's got Tommy in a hole, 0 and 2. Throws him the breaking ball, but he misses. I'm telling you, this could set the tempo for this game tonight if the Indians can get on the board with a couple runs. When you have Bartolo Colon on the on the mound, I told you if they start scoring early for this guy, it's going to be awfully tough to come back on him. The Indians have a good start with the bases loaded and nobody out here in the bottom of the first inning. Jorick working from the stretch with the bases full. Tommy pulls it foul, hit that ball hard, but out in front. He remains one and two. And let's take you back to a two-run homer and a solo home run for Tommy. Both well hit. First, the other way to left center field. It's a big blow that gave the Indians the lead, and then this one added to the lead deep into the picnic plaza. It's under somebody's lunch table. <laughs> of this afternoon, wasn't it? One and two on Tommy. The catcher sets up outside. The pitch is up high. Two and two. Sandy Alomar is on deck. Then David Justice. The Indians trying to make some noise early. Tommy among the leaders in several categories in the American League. Including batting average. Took a little something off the breaking ball, got him out in front, and strikes him out. 
Big strikeout for sure. A double play now might get him off the hook. Well, as you mentioned, he takes something off and he was able to get Jimmy to chase that pitch. He put a little more bend on this breaking ball. You see, he was out front. He kept the hands back, but that ball just about six, eight, eight inches outside. But he gets the first out. The batter is Sandy Alomar. Sandy hitting only 241 with runners in scoring position this year. Went three for nine in the two games against St. Louis. And he's been hitting the ball hard lately. The Astros who had the shift on for Jim Tomey go back to a more regular defense again still looking for the double play that will get them off the hook in the bottom of the first. Curve ball. Ball one. Patience is what it's going to take right here. Patience. Let them get in the strike zone. The Indians now 22 and 16 at home this year. 23 and 15 on the road. Another breaking ball line to third. Not quite on the double play. Good effort by Spires down at third. Sandy hit it hard, but right at the third baseman. So now Shurik, if he can handle justice, can get out of this. This is an excellent base running play by Omar Vizquel. You see, normally you're going to come when you see a ball hit like that. But you know what Omar did? He froze exactly what you should do on a ball that's hit on the line. Look at him. That is excellent base running for Omar to keep this inning going. And if the Indians can score, you can credit Omar to continue this inning. David Justice, three for nine against Shurik. Batting with the bases loaded, but now two outs. The Indians have the bases juiced with nobody out. Tommy strikes out, Alomar lines out. And Shurik trying to battle out of it. First inning jam. High for ball one. Well, he's two thirds of the way there, but the Indians, what they did so well last night against the Cardinals, their first four runs in the ball game came with two outs. And David Justice has hit safely in four straight games. Hitting over 300, 306 with runners in scoring position. A chance to give the Indians the lead. That breaking ball catches the inside corner. One ball and one strike. Well, normally you look for the breaking ball away. He starts the breaking ball at David Justice this time. But for the first time seeing that breaking ball, he'll take it for a strike. I don't think he'll come back in there with a breaking ball again. Justice has not hit a home run since June the 3rd at Minnesota. Strike two. Shurik doing some pretty good pitching to try to get out of this hole. A walk and two singles loaded the bases, but Tommy striking out and Alomar lining out to Bill Spires down at third. And now it's one and two on David Justice. Let's see if he throws that breaking ball away. You see Osma sneaking outside. It's high and outside. Already pitched number 25 for Shurik in the first inning. Could end up taking a toll. He won his last start against his former team, Cincinnati Reds. Only went six innings, gave up five hits and a run. Walked four and struck out five. Previous start, though, he had lost to the Cardinals and only went three innings, giving up six runs and walked a career high seven. So control has been a problem at times. He walked the leadoff man tonight. Strikes out Justice. So sure, it comes back to get three after the Indians load him with nobody out and they leave him jammed. the top half of the second inning some great pitching by Shurik to get out of a jam the Indians had the bases loaded nobody out and did not score he struck out two of the three so Bagwell Alou and Everett the bat for the Astros look at that widespread stance on a very powerful Jeff Bagwell who takes strike one well he just sits up there and uncoils on a pitch very wide stance and he just picks up the front foot puts it down and get that bat head through the hitting area and a 13 game hitting streak ended on the 24th. And also recently picked up his 200th career home run. Spent some time on the time on the DL with a laceration on his right knee. It's activated on the 28th of May. Swing and a miss. Okay, that's the two seamer we talked about earlier that runs down and into the right handers. They're geared up for the four seamer that rides up high and straight that one it's an excellent pitch swings over the top of it 
One ball, two strikes. Cologne's breaking ball away is hit down the right field line, and it's there in the corner. <laughs> Stuck in the wall. And it's going to be a ground rule double. <laughs> Got in between the padding down the right field line, so the Astros are in business with nobody out in the top of the second. Now that's a first. I haven't seen that happen here at Jacobs Field. The slider away, and Bagwell just goes the other way with. Watch the one hopper. Plank right there. Hey, that's a foul ball. <laughs> <laughs> it is now. Bagwell, double number 16 for him, and the Astros come right back in the top half of the second. Moises Alou will bat. He's 0 for 13 right now. Hit three home runs in the World Series against the Indians and a 321 average against the Tribe. Outside corner for strike one. Alou hitting 308 with 15 homers, 59 runs batted in. Boy, he's been a nice addition for Larry Durker. That was one of the problems for the Astros last year with mounting a consistent offense. And they've solved some of those problems, and as you mentioned, with Bell coming back and having a big year, Fiscal makes the play near second. Moving to third is Bagwell, one out. Yeah, once again, there's good base running on Bagwell's part. When you're on second base, and any time that ball is hit to your left and you're getting your secondary lead, you should be able to get to third base. He does just that. Because that ball was hit sharply to a loose, so that's good base running on Bagwell's part. The batter is Carl Everett, who is uh, very quietly having a terrific season. Switch hitter. Been hot in the RBI category of late. 20 runs driven in his last 19 games. Swings and misses. Well, I can tell just by the way he hangs his hands down there, he will not be able to catch up to a Bartolo fastball from where he just threw it. Upstairs, he has his hands down very low. So that tells me he's going to be an excellent low ball hitter. Well, you saw his average at 338. He's even higher than that, 344 from the left side. And five of his seven home runs have come from this side. The Indians have the infield in, and it's fouled back. Well, have you been to Jacobs Field yet? Maybe you've seen a game from the stands, but how about taking the tour right here of Cleveland's beautiful gem in downtown? Tours for Jacobs Field happening daily. Call a number on your screen to make a time to come see it. No balls, two strikes, and Cologne would like to have the punch out here with Bagwell at third, one out. Dave Clark, the DH, is on deck. He stays upstairs. Got it's one and two. Not a bad thought. See if you'll get him to chase it. I'll just bring that four-seamer down a little bit more. Bartolo Colon is 11 and 11 now in his major league career. Strikes him out. There it is. That's a pitch that over the course of the evening he's going to have to take because you certainly cannot get on top of it. And that's good pitching by Colon. Gets his second strikeout and a chance to get out of the inning now. He'll have to deal with Dave Clark. Clark DHing, although he has struggled at the plate. Hitting under 200 as he stands in with two outs and Jeff Bagwell who doubled to start the inning on at third. The Indians now of course with two outs drop the infield back and the pitch to Clark is high and away. Clark he's former Indian has a few ties between these two teams. Tom McCrow is the hitting coach for the Astros is Actually a player in 75 player coach when I was here. Popped it up on the left side of the infield. This cow will move over and take charge. The double but no damage score us as we head to the bottom half of number two. Cleveland Indians baseball and Fox Sports Ohio is brought to you by Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburgers, where quality is our recipe. Here we go to the bottom half of the second inning. It'll be the bottom third of the Indians order up as Mark Whitten will lead off. Whitten uh, facing Shorik some in the National League, just one for 13 against this left-hander. 
Witten's batting average has been higher this season, right handed than left handed. Adding 353 from the right side, 299 overall, and he's played very well since coming up from Mexico to join the Indians. He's done an excellent job for the Indians. A big turning point in the game last night where he threw Gary Gaetti out at home plate when the Cardinals were trying to take the lead. The Indians came back and answered with two to take the lead. He fouls it off. We want to remind you that coming up immediately following our ball game tonight, it's Fox Sports News primetime. We'll have all the scores, the highlights, and more on Fox Sports News primetime. The 2-1 pitch to Mark Whitten, hit on the ground, and uh, making the play as Gutierrez gets up and throws him out. And that one Gutierrez was able to get to. Well, Houston has shown some very good defense to this point the first two innings. Spires made a nice diving play, and here you go. Watch how easy he gets up and just makes the flip to retire Mark Whitten. Good play by Gutierrez for out number one. The Astros are fifth best in the National League in defense as a team coming in. Larry Durker said their hitting and defense has been the thing that's been holding them there. They've committed just 48 errors this season. Ryman takes strike one. Travis has hit safely in his last three games, including a couple of homers and eight runs batted in, hitting 271 on the season. Off speed pitches outside. The count evens out at one ball, one strike. Strike two. And again, it was an off speed pitch. Well, he spots his fastball. Shows it to you and then comes at you with the change up in that curveball. And he gets him swinging. Catcher hangs on and the out is recorded. Ryman checking to make sure it was a strike. And it is strikeout number three for Shurik in the first two innings. And a reminder during all of our Fox Sports Ohio Indians telecast, First Merit Banks will donate $50 to United Way if an Indian hits a home run. It's called First Merit's Home Run for Hometown Charity, sponsored by First Merit Bank. Shurik has had the strikeout pitch working. The first two strikeouts were against left-handers. And he comes back to strikeout Priman and moves ahead of David Bell. No balls, one strike. Bottom of the second inning, we're scoreless. David hitting 294. Bell last year against the Astros went two for 17. One is inside for a ball. Bell went three for nine against the Cardinals. All three of his hits were doubles. There's a little looper toward right field that's going to get down, I think. Nope. Just off the glove of a diving Derek Bell. Like Bell was going to get there. He dove and then had to kick away. Well, he had a long run for it because this ball with jams David Bell. Coming out, he makes a nice attempt. It goes off his glove as you're diving straight in as an outfielder. That's one of your toughest plays. And almost pushed it out of the glove. And he got ready to land. Bounces right back up and holds him to a single. So that's the third hit for the Indians. First time around the lineup. Batting for the second time he is the leadoff hitter Vizquel. He walked on a 3 2 pitch. Omar's average on uh, Mike Whitten's is higher from the right side and than the left. But fewer at bats, obviously right handed. His overall average is updated at 298. No official at bat tonight with that first inning walk. That was backed up by base hits by Dunstan and Ramirez, but the Indians failed to score, even though they loaded the bases with nobody out. Here are two outs, and David Bell is on at first. He runs. Slapped down the right field line foul. Well, the hit and run was on, and David took off. Right idea by Vizcal. It just sliced foul. David had a good jump. He was off and running, and Omar trying to hit that hole on the right side. Bagwell makes an attempt. This ball started in fair territory and then just sliced foul. Back everybody up to their original spots and do it all over again. And no balls and two strikes. Cincinnati has taken the early lead over Detroit and Tiger Stadium, thanks to Sean Casey's two run single in the first inning. White has homered for Montreal. The 
Expos jump ahead of Baltimore three nothing in the first Florida and Boston scoreless in the third inning tonight a time where you may want to try and send David a one two count figuring you're going to get a breaking ball. By the way the matchup in Shea Stadium tonight as the Yankees take on the Mets the Arabo, who leads the American League and earned run average against Al Leiter who leads the National League in ERA. Keep you posted all during the ball game on what else is happening around the major leagues as interleague play and continues. And they've got Bell ticked off. Throw the second is in time and the inning is over. We played two scoreless innings so far. Cleveland Indians baseball on Fox Sports Ohio is brought to you by Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse. When it comes to home improvement, Lowe's knows. Ready now for the top half of inning number three. Hitters eight, nine, and one due up for the Astros against Bartolo Colon, who's given up one hit. The second inning leadoff double by Jeff Bagwell. The Indians have had base runners in each of the first two innings, including leaving the bases loaded in the first. Gutierrez batting 299. Playing shortstop. He takes ball two. Cologne, 23 years old. And 23 last month, and it's fouled away. Despite being 0 for his last seven, Gutierrez has hit safely in 13 of his last 21 games, hitting over 300 in that stretch. Three balls and one strike. Cologne with a pair of strikeouts in the first two innings. Pete Shurik has struck out three so far. And it's fouled back and it's full of three and two. Well, a great place for kids to unwind at an Indian's home game is in Kidsland. A special area features an Indian's team shop just for kids, kids only concessions, and a little Tykes play area. If you're an adult, you must be accompanied by a kid. Speaking of kids, how did camp go today? Camp went very well. A little rain to start, though, didn't you? Yeah, I was a little worried this morning, but we ended up having a nice uh, nice day here at Jacobs Field. I want to thank all the coaches for their help and all the things that went on. Now we get a little breather. Two straight weeks of camps. Time for a little time off, isn't it? Yes, indeed. <laughs> Another 3-2 pitch coming up. It's outside. The first walk tonight by Bartolo Colon. Leadoff man aboard for Houston for the second straight inning. Sitting on the outside corner, just off the edge. All about four, six inches outside. Watch where Sandy's got to put the glove. Gutierrez can hold up, so it's walk number one for Colon. Brad Osmus, the catcher, will bat. Runner at first and nobody out for Houston. As Cologne goes over and you can expect these Astros to be on the move. Gutierrez has six stolen bases. They do lead the National League in steals and also in caught stealing. So that will show you that Larry Durker is not afraid to put people in motion. Ball one. One and oh. Tell you how well Cologne is pitched as you see him working on his release there with his arm. His shortest outing of the year is six innings. That was that game against Toronto when he was matched up for the first time against Roger Clemens. And he came back a few days later and really put it to the Blue Jays when he got another chance. But they worked him over pretty good. Ten hits and seven runs on that occasion. There's a ground ball. Bell can't get their base hit. Rounding and going to third. Here comes the throw. Not in time. And that's going to mean runners at second and third. Whitten decided to try to get the runner. So now the Astros with nobody out are in business again. Give Osmus a single. He goes to second on the throw to third. Well, a tough play there, Mark Whitten. He uh, had to make a 360 to throw this ball. It wasn't hit sharply, so it was good hustle by Gutierrez to go to third base. But you want to try and keep that double play alive if you're an outfielder. You see with the turn, if he could have came up directly and had the, the chance to throw at him. Made it closer than what it appears. Houston is in business again. Second straight inning that they've had a runner in scoring position with nobody out. 
Vigio bounced back to the pitcher his first time up. And this time the Indians keep the infield back. In the last inning when they had Bagwell at third and one out, uh, they brought the infield in. But with runners at second and third and nobody out, they keep the infield That's back. That's the difference with nobody out. They can get an out here. They will bring it right back in. It's a very good hitter. Puts the ball in play. You don't want to give him a chance to hit a little fl a flare and drive in two runs. Chops it up the third baseline. It's foul. And the count is one and one. So Colon has had to pitch out of some early trouble himself. Sure, he dodged a first inning bullet when he loaded the bases with nobody out and got out of it. The two leaders in the central division of the respective leagues. We are online as well tonight. Hope you can join us with your questions, comments. Fox Wahoo at AOL.com. That's our address. Top half of the third inning tonight. The lone breeze through the first and then gave up the leadoff double in the second. Here, a walk and a single have gotten him in trouble in the third inning. Hit on the ground and through. That'll score one run. The throw will come to second base. The Astros still with nobody out have taken a one nothing lead. RBI number 44 for Biggio. Osmus winds up at third and Gutierrez scores. So this might have been a changeup that he left up in the strike zone. He's able to pull into the hole. So Houston takes an early one to nothing lead. Just the second run that Cologne has allowed in his last four starts. The Indians will look for the double play defensively with runners at first and third. Bill Spires called out on strikes his first time up. As Cologne snapped off a good curveball to freeze him and strike him out. Houston has taken the lead in the third inning. That's hit on the ground. Bell gets there, flips to Vizquel for one on the first for two. It's two nothing Houston. The Indians get two outs. Well, what a nice double play from David Bell to Omar Vizquel to Jim Tomey. This will be our Discover card payback playback. Spires hits his ball. David has to go to his right, makes the backhand, and a nice flip to Omar. As he is on the run, that's a nice soft feed, and Omar turns it, and that's just what the Indians and Bartolo Colon needed was the double play, and that's double play 66 for the Indians. No RBI on that play with the double play. Derek Bell is grounded out to shore. Two second bases, first time up, will be the batter. Hits it down the right field line, slicing toward the corner, and out of play. We want to send along some get well wishes to Ashley. She broke her ankle on a trampoline, so Ashley, hurry up and get better. That is Ashley Weiskopf. And also happy birthday wishes to Robin Jedrzak of our uh, Fox Sports Ohio office. I happened to bump into the whole crew, taking her out for her birthday lunch this afternoon out at Shula's. Swing and a miss. By Bell, it's all in two. You knew they were going to be there. You wanted uh, lunch, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, nobody bought either. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was in business for a while. The whole crew was there. Steve, Brenda, Jane, Charlie, everybody was there, I think. There was obviously no one in the office. It would be a good time to drop by the office, pick up your mail. 0-2 pitch outside. So we say happy birthday to Robin. I know they had a good lunch because they were making all kinds of noise over there. <laughs> One two pitch. He swings and misses striking out but the Astros score two to take the lead. A couple of hits and a walk to take a two nothing lead. The Indians have the top of the order for the bottom of the third inning. A strike to Vizquel who was at the plate when David Bell was picked off first base. Omar walked his first time up. It's one and one a note from the Boston game. As the Red Sox playing in Florida tonight, Mo Vaughn left the game in the fourth inning with an apparent leg injury. Fly ball down the left field line. It's going to move into the seats. It's one and two. Well, we have another birthday wish we have to send along. A former sports writer for Cleveland Plain Dealer and 
the founder of Golf Week magazine. Happy birthday, Charlie Stein, who is 71 years old today. One and two the count on Omar Vizquel leading off for the Indians. And hits it through the left side. So Vizquel, the Indians' fourth hit. They've had a base runner and a hit in every inning. Second straight inning, that's their second time in three innings. They've had Vizquel aboard to start the inning. That's one reason why he, Mike started David Bell the inning before when Omar was buried in the count. Because if he steals the base, it's great. He's got a chance to drive men. If he doesn't, you still have Omar leading this inning off, and he gets a base hit. John Dunstan got a base hit his first time up. Now that the shadows are off the pitcher's mound, it may be a different verdict the second time around for Pete Short. Remember, the Indians loaded the bases against him with nobody out in the first inning and shut him down. Vizcal is running. The pitch is a ball, and there's no throw. Vizcal got a great jump that time. Well, I'll tell you, like I, like I mentioned, they must have times, I, I'm sure, on Osmus, but you'll see they're off and running, and he does not take a lot of time to get rid of the ball. Osmus tried to hurry the throw, couldn't get it on the transfer. The scale in with stolen base number 14. And for the Indians, stolen base number 92. Go right back at him come the Indians. Trying to cut into a 2 0 Houston lead. Dunstan pulls it foul down the third baseline. That'll even the count at 1 and 1. And Fox Sports Ohio would like to extend a very special hello and welcome to the viewers who are joined us tonight on Media One in Bay Village and Avon Lake, Ohio. And also Mark's Cablevision in Green, Ohio. Glad to have all of you with us tonight. Watching Indians baseball on the cable home of the Cleveland Indians, Fox Sports Ohio. Dunstan bumps it down the third baseline, fielded by Spires, throw to first. He drops the ball, and everybody's safe. Vizquel goes to third. Tough spot for Bagwell to handle that throw. You're absolutely right. Sean Dunstan's going with the element of surprise there. He wants to get a base hit and also move Vizquel to third base. The reason why Bagwell could not hold on to this ball as Dunstan's hustling down the line. Watch the throw. It's almost like the throw is going right into the runner. And Dunstan may knock it out of his glove here. You see, he's got to go over the bag and hits the glove and knocks it out. So that is a tough throw for Bagwell to handle. That could be a severe collision there. He tried to keep his foot on the bag, make the catch. Well, that's going to be a tough call right there. He never really had control of the baseball. No. Well, he realized if he went any farther up the line, he would have, him and Dunstan would have had a head on. It's first and third, and nobody out. Second good chance for the Indians against Shurik tonight. Out of play off the bat of Manny Ramirez, who singled his first time up. Got an infield hit, a great play at third by Spires to take away a double and save a run in that first inning. It's going to be an infield hit. Yeah, but single. As you said, kind of a tough call, but you almost have to go that way. I, I know. It's a, it would be a tough play with uh, trying to give Spires an error on that because he, it's a do-or-die play where he's making the throw on the run. Dunstan draws the throw, and you can see that Sean is wearing some extra protection on that left arm, which was bruised, but otherwise no further damage they did send him for some x-rays after he was hit by a pitch. Ramirez a little bouncer forward short. The only play is to first. The Indians have cut the lead in half. Give Ramirez the RBI. He's out. Dunstan goes to second and Vizquel thanks to the stolen base scores the run. Well they waste no time in getting right back on the board. It was a pitch, a changeup, it might have been from Shork as Manny gets on top of the baseball. Gutierrez over to first, <laughs> and they all move up. That's our popcorn. <laughs> Slider. This guy. What are you doing, pal? How are you, my man? Welcome. Now clean up this mess you just made here. <laughs> want that popcorn anyway. Jim Tomey takes a breaking ball for a strike. Jim struck out with the bases loaded in the first inning. 
The Indians have made it a two to one ball game and have the tying run at second and the Astros even with the, the bases loaded and here with the runner at second they don't hesitate. They put the shift on Jim Tomey. Moving Gutierrez over to the second base side of the bag. Tomey swings and misses again an off speed breaking ball and he's down in the count no balls two strikes. Well, that tells me exactly that's how they're going to pitch Jim Tomey a lot of slow stuff away and hope he rolls over on it. If they're going to give him that left side of the infield you'll see that pitch at 72 miles per hour. A lot of break. The Indians have scored to make it two to one. Fastball is outside. There's the shift that we were talking about. Do you have a sweeper, Rick? I think he was up there. It must be Friday night prime time. He wanted to get on the air. <laughs> I guess so. One out. The runner at second base is Sean Dunstan. Lined on one hop off of Gutierrez over to the second baseman and Tommy's out. 6-4-3. He hit a bullet right at Gutierrez. It winds up in the hands of Biggio and winds up out number two. Well, that, that's why they have that defense like that. There's the first fastball that Tommy sees. It's middle of the plate, and he drills it up the middle. It just handcuffs Gutierrez, but it deflects right to Biggio, and it goes as a routine out uh, after the bullet off the bat of Jim Tommy. Dunstan does move up to third base. But if he's not playing there, it's a base hit into center field. The Absolutely. game's tied. Meantime, it's up to Sandy Alomar, who lined out to Bill Spires his first time up. That is low, bounces away from the catcher. Umpire will check the ball. We have a chance to check out our new Dodge home run leaders right now before we wrap up this inning. Interleague play continuing. Of course, we saw the number one guy here, Mark McGuire, with number 34 and yesterday number 35. Sammy Sosa hot on his heels with 32, then Griffey and the rest. One ball, no strikes. The Indians need that two out hit that they came up with last night to tie this ball game. Foul back, one and one. Manny Ramirez picking up his 60th RBI on a ground out. See Sandy asking Larry McCoy, was that a strike? And McCoy get well, it was about that much too high. He had his hands <laughs> like at two inches. Count is one and one. High and away. In the first inning, when Shurik had the bases loaded, he worked from the stretch. And now here in this inning, with the runner at third and two outs, he goes from the full windup. Houston has a two to one lead. The Indians trying to tie it up with two outs in the bottom of the third inning. Down the right field line, but out of play. Two balls, two strikes. Let's check in with uh, Matt Underwood, who's down by the dugout. Matt? John from the Enough is Enough Already department, 40-year-old Lee Smith, the Major League's all-time saves leader who retired last season, signed a Triple-A contract three weeks ago with the Astros. They just sent him down to Double-A because after nine games, he had two saves, he had one win, but he had an earn run average of 6.23. The Strohs are going to make a decision on his future sometime next week. Yeah, it sounds to me like he's going in the wrong direction. <laughs> exactly. He's going down, 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 and gone. Three and two on Sandy Alomar. It's amazing for a guy that spent as much time in the big leagues as he is that he would even go to the minor leagues. That is. You know, that's incredible. Hang him up. Three two pitch. Full foul. Still three and two. Is Shorik one of these guys who's really got to have his control and be able to spot his pitches? Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, everybody does, but well, I'll keep you off stride. You know, he's got to move it in, move it out, change speeds on the breaking ball, the change up. You got to be patient as a hitter. Alomar fouls off another 3 2 pitch. You see, that was a change up right there on the full count. So, you know, you concentrate other on going the opposite way if you're a right handed hitter and just react to anything inside. If he comes inside with the fastball, he's either going to miss inside with it. For a ball or make a perfect pitch. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Tying run at third here in the bottom of the third inning. 
another one pulled foul. So that's three, three and two pitches that Sandy has wasted. Indians off to a good start on this five game homestand winning the first two games against the Cardinals in good fashion 14 to 3 and 8 to 2. But now it's Houston. And again Sandy just reaches out stays alive. That's four straight foul balls on a 3 2 pitch. Well thou shall not pass here. Sandy's <laughs> not going to let him throw anything by him. He wants to try and score Dunstan from third base. him out on the breaking ball. Sandy checks. Yeah, it's strike three. The inning is over. The Indians get one. Trail by one. Cleveland Indians baseball on Fox Sports Ohio is brought to you by the Ohio Lottery. Feel lucky. And by First Merit. And they are here from North Eaton. Rick Manning is still an all-star in Cleveland. All right, I'll buy that. that. Not outside Cleveland, just Cleveland. <laughs> Maybe it's only in North Eaton. You think? I hope so. <laughs> All right, Bagwell, who doubled to lead off the second inning, stranded at third, will start it off here in the top of the fourth inning. A two to one Houston lead. And Bartolo's not gotten that pitch called a strike so far tonight. Does that when he got it up a little bit at the same spot on the outside part of the plate but a little higher for a one ball one strike count I'll be the judge as you look down from above bouncing ball left side this cow backhands in the hole the throw is on target and in time boy he makes it look easy well office max and the Cleveland Indians are proud to bring you the parent child baseball clinics we had one today at Jacobs Field the first of four that will go on during the course of the summer. You see the numbers on your screen. Make the call if you are interested. The batter is a Lou who grounded out to Viz Kelly's first time up. And he hits this one towards center field. It'll drop in for a base hit. Got it off the end of the bat a bit. But it is hit number four for the Astros. They have had at least one hit in each of the last three innings now against Bartolo Colon. Hey, this wasn't a bad pitch by Colon. First pitch breaking ball. Watch. He picks this ball up off the ground. Breaks his bat. Has to go down and get it. But got enough of it to serve it past Vizquel. And Carl Everett, who struck out swinging at a high fastball his first time up, stands in. The Astros leading by one as they bat here in the top of the fourth inning. Strike one is called. Well, it was all high fastballs the first time around when he got Everett to strike out. And they're not going to change their pattern. First pitch upstairs, 94 miles an hour for a strike. He laid off this one. Good shot there. Ever last year played for the Mets and then was traded in December to Houston. Joe's bunt picks a ball up high. It's one ball, one strike. He hit only 248 for the Mets last year in 142 games. Started his major league career in Florida. Originally drafted by the Yankees, but then picked up in the expansion draft by the Florida Marlins. Swing and a miss. He's out in front of that pitch. It's one and two. After seeing a steady diet of fastballs, Bartolo pulls the string on this pitch. He's been on the disabled list five different times in his short professional career. And he 
strikes out for the second time tonight. He is not going to be able to handle that pitch, as you mentioned, Rick. Yeah, but you know what happens, though? When you start him off with one, he tried to lay off, but it was called a strike. Then he throws a changeup on the inside part of the plate, off the plate, and he swings and misses. And you, you're protecting with two strikes, and Bartolo just blows him away. Brings up Clark, who popped up to Vizquel his first time up. up again. And this is a major league pop up. Jim Tomey down the line at first as Bartolo Colon moves out of the way. A hit a man left. We played three and a half. It's two to one Astros. This is baseball on Fox Sports Ohio is brought to you by Dodge. See your friendly Dodge dealers today. And by the Discover card. It pays to discover. Two to one Astros lead is David Justice, Mark Whitten, and Travis Fryman prepare to go to work in the bottom of the fourth inning against Pete Shurek, who's given up five hits tonight. They have all been singles, including one bunt single. Justice struck out to end the first inning. That's when the Indians left the bases loaded. They did score a run in the third, the RBI on a ground out to Manny Ramirez. And Justice takes the first pitch outside for a ball. David working on a modest four game hitting streak eight for his last 19 now as he stands in one and one and that's pretty much the top end of his fastball right there 88 to 90 miles an hour fly ball well hit toward left field on the move as a Lou gets to the warning track and it's off his glove. Lou tried to get to it, and David Justice is going to wind up with a double, and the Indians continue their string of extra base hits. Well, he took a bad route to this ball. He started to go straight across the outfield, not realizing that this ball was hit much better than what it was. David put a charge into it, and then all of a sudden he had to go straight back, and by the dead run, it goes off the end of his glove. And Justice gets a double. Starts Indian. the fourth inning out. Indians pick up the base hit. That is their sixth of the ball game now and their first extra base hit and immediately the tying run is in scoring position as Witten takes a strike. Well, three out of the four innings they've had their leadoff man aboard. But only in the third did they cash that leadoff man in as Kel set it up by getting a base hit stealing second moving up on Dunstan's bunt single and then scored on the slow roller to short off the bat of Ramirez. The Astros also scored in the third inning one run scoring on Biggio's RBI base hit and the second run scored on a double play ball. We're in the bottom of the fourth. The Indians trying to tie it up against the Astros. Full foul into the Indians dugout. It's a ball and two strikes on Witten. Mark making the start in center field tonight. It's Kenny Lofton who had been two for three against Shurik gets a night off a night of rest. Well, the one thing the Astros have done well in interleague play as far as a pitching staff goes is they have only given up two home runs in the eight games coming into tonight. That's a pretty good job. Two and two on Witten. David Justice on its second. Gets the double to get this inning started and extend his hitting streak to five in a row. Nine for 20 now. In a five game hitting streak is Mark Witten. Looks at a 2-2 pitch and flips it foul into the seats behind the dugout. Our next game will be on the road. It will be with the Indians in Milwaukee as they wind up interleague play with a series against the Brewers. We'll start with tribe time at 7 and then have all of the play-by-play uh, -play coming up immediately following right here on Fox Sports Ohio. All right, he tried to tie Mark Witten up on that 2-2 pitch inside. Did get inside. See if he follows it up with a changeup down and away, trying to get him to pull the ball with a man on second. He comes back inside with a breaking ball, and the count is full at three and two. Justice doubling off the glove of Moises Alou and left to start this inning.
Indians have had a runner in scoring position with nobody out in three of the first four tonight, but have scored just one run. Ground ball, and it's going to keep Justice at second base as Witten is out number one. Well, the Cleveland Indians have teamed up with J.D. Power and Associates, the nation's leader in customer satisfaction research, in an effort to make your Jacobs Field and Indians team shop experiences even better. So the next time you're at the ballpark and an usher offers you a questionnaire to take home, please do fill it out and provide your feedback. The 250th consecutive sellout crowd is on hand tonight in downtown Cleveland. Ryman takes a strike. This is another off-speed pitch. won the count. Shurik has gotten a little tougher every time he's gotten in trouble tonight. That one hits Fryman. Justice trots to third, but he'll have to turn around and go back. The Indians have runners at first and second now. Third batter that Shurik has hit this year. Look like this ball hopped up and hit him. On the bounce. It did, and he didn't move. He pretty much took one for the team right no there. No need to move right there. Trying to block that catch out as he's going to try and go over and get it. A short hop in the leg. So Fryman will be at first. Online from Paul and Sylviana. The Ten games being played this weekend in National League parks and only five in American League venues. How is the umpiring being split? Are American League umpires working in NL stadiums? Or are they bringing up their minor league prospects to help out? I don't know. You'll have to check the box scores to find out. That's a good question. Excellent question. We talked about the unusual situation with this umpiring crew going to be here for probably all five games of this homestand. That's it. I'm going to check the papers tomorrow. I don't know. If you want to, you can check the, uh, the ticker and we can probably get them tonight. I, mean, I don't want to put you out. Make we'll you have Tommy do that now. First and second with one out for the Indians here in the fourth inning. David Bell looped a base hit off the glove of Derek Bell in right field. His first at bat and then was caught trying to steal. Justice started the inning with a double. Three balls, no strikes. As, uh, Home plate kind of hopping around a little bit on Shorick with the number nine hitter up there. Vizcal is on deck. Omar scored the Indians run back in the third inning. We're now in the fourth. The Indians trying to tie it up. Fryman was hit by a pitch leads off at first and there's the first strike. It's three and one to David Bell. So David in his last three games now four for ten. All three of his hits against the Cardinals were extra base hits, doubles. His last one driving in a run for the Indians. The runners go. The pitch is pulled down the left field line and into the seats. Well, Mike Cargrove starting the runners on the 3-1 pitch, trying to get something to happen, create a hole out there, figuring that Shirk does not want to walk David Bell, so he's going to get a fastball. And David Bell broke his bat as he got out in front of that pitch well, and hit it out of play. He gets the fastball. It's inside and pulls it foul. And there go the runners. You see the third baseman's got to wait. Spires has got to wait until the hitter hits the ball. Starts breaking in. But that's what you try and do is get that infield moving. Create maybe a little hole for a ground ball to go through. Now it's three and two. Still just one out. Houston looking for the inning ending double play as Shurik turns and chases David Justice back to second base. Game one of three. Doc Gooden and Jose Lima matched up tomorrow and then Charles Nagy and Shane Reynolds on Sunday. It was both day games. Again, the runners go. The ball is hit hard into left field, but Alou is there. It's going to be a double play, and the inning will be over. There's the tag at second, the double play, and it's two to one after four.
Interlink play continues from Jacobs Field tonight as we move to the middle part of the ball game. First pitch is up high for a ball to Gutierrez who walked back in the third inning. This is the only batter that uh, Bartolo Colon has been two balls no strikes on. He walked him and he came around to score one of the two Astros runs. He fouls that pitch out of play. Well, to answer that question that we had online about the umpires, Tommy says that he has seen some unfamiliar names popping up around National League ballparks, so they may be calling up some NL umps. Well, if we can uh, find some lists, we'll let you know. R Ramirez goes back to the warning track to take care of the fly ball off the bat of Gutierrez. Well, boys and girls, ages 7 to 14, there are still spots remaining for the Indians Fox Sports Ohio Baseball Skills Competition. That's presented by University Hospitals Health System. Registration forms are available at all Indian team shops or by calling the number on your screen. There is walk-up registration for the Menor event tomorrow at Garfield Park. You never know. If you do well in the competition, you can be heading right here to Jacobs Field to the finals. Either that or you can Eat some ice cream. Ball one to Brad Osmus, who singled in the third, hustled his way to second as uh, Gutierrez was racing to third. The throw from Witten went to third, and he was able to go to second and eventually scored the second run of the inning. Two and zero, oh the count. Bartolo Colon in the 55 pitch range now as he works into the top half of the fifth inning. Remember, Rick mentioned. Uh, be a little bit of concern about the 139 pitches that he threw in his last outing. This one is fouled away. It does not seem to bother him to this point. That's for sure. It's two and one. In case you were wondering, uh, the long man in the bullpen, Tim Worrell, is wearing number 33 for the Indians. It's two and two. Another happy 40th birthday going out to Terry Miller, who is a true Indians fan. Happy birthday, Terry. He's full of birthday wishes tonight, aren't you? And we're not done. <laughs> okay. One out. Nobody on. And the count goes full at three balls and two strikes. Well, we will be down after this. A 21st birthday to Dennis Clark. Happy birthday, Dennis Jr. And what if we get some more brought into us as the game goes along? Are you not doing them? <laughs> that's <laughs> yes, it for you tonight, huh? <laughs> not gonna do it. Payoff pitch is fouled back. It remains three and two. Osmus now 29 years old. He was born in Connecticut. Now makes his home in San Diego. It's a high school in Connecticut, but he and his wife now live in the San Diego area. Not a bad choice. There's a fly ball. Another one toward the right field corner. Ramirez again on the move. Reaches down and makes the play. Just as he crossed into foul territory. Good effort that time. Well, he had to run a little further than I think he thought because this ball was slicing away. You see, he cuts back, and now he's cutting across. The ball would have been a fair ball. Makes a nice running catch for out number two. Top of the order now, Biggio, who drove in one of the Houston runs back in that two-run third inning. The other scored on a double play. Upstairs for ball one. Biggio now 32 years old. Lives in New Jersey. First round pick of the Houston Astros in 87. And what's been an outstanding first rounder, hasn't he? No doubt about it. He started out as a catcher. How many catchers can turn into be all-star second baseman, score about 130 runs a year, steal 40 bases. And win three gold gloves. <laughs> right. <at second> base. <laughs> Absolutely. He Two. has been terrific. Outstanding athlete. I think he was voted in at second base yes. this year for the National League. Well, I'll tell you what. You know, he is the first last year becoming the first Astro player ever to start consecutive All-Star game. He's a good one. One ball, one strike. Little roller to Bell. One second baseman is going to take care of the other. We are at the midway point tonight. Two to one. Astros. one. 
And for the third time tonight, Omar Vizquel, who is in the leadoff spot in the order, will lead off an inning. He walked to start the first inning, single to start the third, and scored the only Cleveland run of the night. Take strike one from left-hander Pete Shuri, 6'5", 205, long and slender, out of Falls Church, Virginia. One and one to count. Four hits for the Astros, six for the Indians, but Houston has one more run. Strike two in a good spot. Good fastball spotted on the inside part of the plate. You well, know, he started this game where it looked like he was going to be in severe trouble in the first inning. Bases loaded. He has settled down. The Indians three out of four innings. Off the line at third is Spires to take care of this gal. One out. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians and Fox Sports Ohio. The batter will be Sean Dunstan, who has two of the Indians' six hits. A single in the first and a bunt single in the third inning. He's been aboard twice. And it's only the second time in five innings that Shurik has retired the leadoff batter. But he has pitched well when he's gotten in trouble. Four strikeouts. Just that leadoff walk in the bottom of the first to Vizquel. On his card tonight. Behind third base, going out is Gutierrez in fair territory to retire Dunstan for the second out. Let's check out our DIY home warehouse game recap at the midway point. Two good starts by both of our pitchers tonight. Pichio has the game's RBI with that single in the third, and the Indians uh, have left five and then just two for ten now with runners in scoring position. The Indians have had a lot more chances than the Astros, but have not been able to capitalize so far. First two retired. Just the second time tonight that Shurik has retired the first two batters in an inning. The off-speed pitch has Ramirez out in front for a swinging strike one. Manny one for two, got a base hit in the first, and then picked up an RBI on a ground out in the third inning. One and one the count on Manny Ramirez. Crowd so far tonight been pretty quiet, and you can credit that to Mr. Shurik. Yeah, they thought they were going to get plenty of offense at the start of the first inning. Base was loaded, nobody out. They could not get on the board. That one is rifled foul down the third baseline, and the Royal Auto family has combined has combined its entire used car inventory for 42 hours at Royal Chevrolet and Aurora. They'll give you a minimum $3,000 trade toward any used car purchase only at Royal Chevrolet, where customers come first. Twenty-six year old Manny Ramirez takes a pitch outside that evens the count of two balls, two strikes. You'll see where Osmus is sitting in that ball outside. Tried to hit the outside corner but missed. 2 2 pitch is high. It's full of 3 and 2. Jim Tomey is on deck. Manny, a former number one draft pick of the Indians in 1991. Fouls it back. Pretty good rip at that pitch. And it's still 3 and 2. Manny hit 26 homers, drove in 88 last year. He's got 14 homers so far this season, with now 60 runs batted in. And with his one for two, he has raised his batting average a couple of points tonight. Lays off a pitch up and out of the strike zone. His walk at number two. 
for sure it's a two out walk to Ramirez and it gives Jim Tomey a chance to bat here in the bottom half of inning number five. Tomey is 0 for 2. He has struck out and grounded out. And he grounded out because the shift was on. He had a wicked one hopper at uh, Gutierrez, who is again stationed on the second base side of second. The ball kicked over to Biggio, who threw him out. And the Indians have had their opportunities. Let me show you. It's 2 for 10 with runners in scoring position so far tonight. Tommy takes the ball up high. Six four, two hundred and twenty five pounds. Twenty seven year old. Out of the state of Illinois and he really enjoyed going back to Chicago. Yes. A lot of the ball players did. Tommy takes a strike. It's one and one. They've changed the pattern a little bit. He had seen a lot of off speed slow stuff. And I think he might have been in that at bat looking for something breaking going down in the way. And sure started to miss uh, at bat with two fastball. This make, one is fouled back. Make it three. The game of adjustments. Now you figure after three in a row. He may go back to the pitch that he was trying to get him out earlier with the slow breaking balls down and away. That ball low high enough on the hands you'll see out of the strike zone as Jimmy's not going to get on top of that ball and follow it straight back. That's where you can get him out with the fastball up and in. There's the breaking ball but it's high. And the count is two and two. You walk Manny on a three two pitch. He's gone to two and two on Jim Tony so his pitch count begins to climb a bit. Remember he threw a lot of pitches in that very first inning. Tommy awaits a 2-2 offering. A breaking ball and he just does get a piece of that one. Right off the end of the bat. But he's alive at 2-2. Two and two. Tough to stay back on this breaking ball. He sees it well. But just to hold back and a, good, a cue shot right there. Put some chalk on it and re-cue it. The Astros have played very well in the close games this season 13 and 7 in one run ball games. The Indians on the other hand are 9 and 10 in close contests this year decided by one run. Full count three and two. And that is 100 pitches in the fifth inning for sure. And the Astros bullpen is heavily laden with left handers. You've got Wagner, Miller, Nitkowski, and Magnati. All left handers available out of the bullpen for Larry Jerker. Tomey fouls it back as Ramirez was on the move on that 3 2 pitch. Oh, we'll back everything up and do it again. Tomey was drafted by the Indians in 1989, but he was a 13th round draft pick. He went to junior college after he was not drafted coming out of high school. And it's been a good selection for the Indians. Strikes him out. That will end the inning. The Indians strand their sixth runner. We'll move to the sixth. A two to one lead for the Astros. For the Astros as they go to work against Bartolo Colon here in the top half of inning number six. Just four hits for Houston tonight, but they have the lead two to one. The Indians have stranded six. The Astros have left just two through the first five. Spires has been called out on strikes and grounded into a double play tonight. And on that double play, the second run in the third inning scored. Both teams putting a number on the board in the third inning. First pitch is a called strike one.
The count is one and one. And I'll hear from Matt Underwood again in this inning. Upstairs for ball two, two and one. You know, the Indians in Bartolo's four losses have only scored him six runs. They have been scoring a ton of runs in his last three starts. But not tonight. It's a two to one ball game. 32 year old Bill Spires out of South Carolina right back up the middle for a base hit. And that's the start for the Astros here in the sixth inning. He's aboard with Bell and Bagwell to follow and then a Lou. Let's check in with Matt Underwood for the second time tonight. John Mark McGuire's mammoth 461 foot home run last night at Jacobs Field. Still the talk around the ballpark this afternoon. But think about this. If McGuire's home run was 461 and it hit that pole connected to the scoreboard. Well then where is the longest home run in baseball history land? Mickey Mantle 565 feet at Old Griffith Stadium home of the Washington Senators. Well you got to figure if that's 461. We're standing at 565 on the deck of the parking garage behind left field. Uh, uh, is right. That would be about right, wouldn't it, Rick? <laughs> yeah. Ground ball, one hopper to third. There's one at second on the first. Double play. Boy, David Bell really hangs in there on a double play. Spires was bearing down on him at second base as Fryman got him the ball, and he hung in there tough. And relays the throw to Tommy. See the two hopper. Now watch where Spires is going in to try and take him out. Relay. Second double play of the evening for the Indian. Brings up Bagwell with the bases empty. Jeff is one for two. Doubled and grounded out. This gal made a nice play going to the hole to his right to backhand and throw him out. Uh, it was not an easy play and he made it look pretty easy. Strike is called on the inside part of the plate. By the way, the injury for Mo Vaughn caused him to leave, leave the game tonight in Florida. A right hamstring strain. Sky to left center field. Witten and Dunstan are out there. It'll be Mark Witten moving in, stays with it. And the side is retired. Five and a half in the book. Two to one, Astros. Cleveland Indians baseball on Fox Sports Ohio is brought to you by your Chevy Network dealers. It's where Northeast Ohio is going. Your Chevy is ready. By BW3 Grill and Pub, the home of the real wing and a preferred restaurant of the tribe. And by DIY Home Warehouse for all of the comforts of your home. Pitching change for the Astros as we go to the bottom half of the sixth inning. Five innings of work for Shurik, but you saw his pitch count was up there. He uh, gives up six hits, four strikeouts, two walks, one run. It was earned, so he is finished tonight. He cannot be the loser, could be the winner. He turns it over to one of the left-handers out of the bullpen for Larry Durker. C.J. Nipkowski comes on, the 25-year-old. Former Detroit Tiger is appearing for the 31st time. He has a 3-2 and two record and a 3.14 earned run average. Does have a couple of saves. 43 innings pitch, just 40 hits. Walk 16, struck out 25, coming on to face 5, 6, and 7 in Mike Cargrove's lineup. Spent all of last year in the minor leagues where he led the American Association in strikeouts with 141. Huge trade between the Tigers and the Astros back on December the 10th. He was one of the Tigers coming over along with Osmus, Lima, Miller, and Ward. The deal that sent Rocale, Hunter, Todd Jones, Orlando Miller, and a player to be named later the other way. He just backed up the buses and swapped a whole bunch yeah. of folks. Alomar lines it toward right field. Derek Bell is over. Takes care of Sandy for the first out here in the sixth inning. Check out our Sherwin Williams scoreboard here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. It's, uh, Detroit now on top of Cincinnati, three to two. Florida leads uh, trails Boston in the seventh inning, two to one. It's Montreal five to two over Baltimore in the fifth, and Philadelphia shutting out Tampa. Here's some more two nothing Toronto over Atlanta in the fourth inning. The Mets have a one nothing lead over the Yankees in Shea. White Sox one nothing over the Brewers at home. Cubs lead Kansas City in Kauffman Stadium, two to one. We'll check out the rest of the scores in just a moment. Justice a double his last time up, but then was thrown out on a double play as he was running on a 3-2 pitch and was doubled off by Moises Alou. 
The Tigers getting back on top tonight thanks to a home run by Cruz as Justice chops it foul. One out, nobody on for the Indians here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Good breaking ball in Justice's history. Check out the rest of the scoreboard. St. Louis getting beat by Minnesota 1 0 early. Oakland is in Colorado later as Anaheim is in San Diego, Seattle in Arizona. Pittsburgh in Los Angeles and Texas in San Francisco on the West Coast starting later. First pitch fouled away by switch hitting Mark Whitten. Missing Mikowski who came up to the major leagues. On the National League side of the ledger appeared for both Cincinnati and Detroit in 1995. And as I mentioned the pitch for the Tigers briefly in 96 and then spent all of 97 in New Orleans. This is his second appearance of his career against the Indians. Out of Suffren, New York. There's a strike. Two balls, two strikes now. Attended St. John's University. And the count goes full at three and two. Former first round pick of the Reds back in 94. His flip foul and the count remains full. Three balls, two strikes. During Fox Sports Ohio's broadcast of Indians games, BP will be making a donation to Jobs for American Graduates. It's the BP Big Play for Charity. Full count on Whitten, batting with two outs and nobody on. Second straight inning that the Indians have received a bases loaded walk. They'll bring up Travis Fryman, who's 0 for 1. He has struck out and been hit by a pitch. See Larry Durger checking the lineup card. Six strikeouts recorded by Astros pitchers tonight, with uh, Nitkowski getting his first. Now facing Fryman, and he fouls it away. Updated average at 270 with his 0 for 1 tonight. Hit by a pitch his last time up. Whitten with a short lead at first. He walked with two outs. And now it's 0 and 2 on Travis Fryman. Well, remember, your summer party isn't really complete without a big order of award winning BW3 wings with 12 signature sauces from mild to blazing. There's a BW3 wing for everyone. BW3 Grill and Pub, a preferred restaurant of the Cleveland Indians. 0 oh 2 the count. Nitkowski out of the bullpen, picking it up for another lefty, Pete Shurik, who made the start tonight for the Astros. And it's 2 to 1. They've been in front since the third. They got their two in the top of the third. The Indians scored in the bottom of the third. The Astros have stranded just two men through the first six innings. The Indians have left six and have Witten running. The pitch is looped into shallow left center field. Drops for a hit. Witten checks up briefly and then moves to third. So it's first and third with two out. Time run is 90 feet away. So Travis continues to swing a pretty good bat for the Indians. Well, Travis protecting with two strikes down in the count. This ball gets in on him and really jammed him. Mark Witten was running on the pitch and picks it up, realizes there's two outs and a nice job of running. Watch Witten. He's going to force a Lou to get rid of the ball. Turn, he picks it up. Right there, he makes a Lou make the throw to the plate. There was no cutoff, man, because the shortstop had gone out to try to help track down the ball, and Biggio was standing at second base in case a throw needed to be made there, so the throw came all the way into the infield. 
But it's first and third with two down. So the Indians get another chance with runners in scoring position. Their 11th opportunity tonight. Bell is one for two. Backs away from ball one. Hit number seven for the Indians, and Fryman extends his hitting streak to four games in a row. Fly ball into center field. Right there is Everett. And the Indians strand two more. They have left eight through six and trail by a run. At the top half of the seventh inning tonight at Jacobs Field, you're Watching us tonight on Fox Sports Ohio. Happy to have you aboard. John Sanders along with Rick Manning. We've heard from Matt Underwood a couple of times, and he'll be back one more time before we're finished tonight. Alou is one for two. Got a base hit his last time up. Colon has given up five hits. And that is his 71st pitch. So he's been much more effective with his pitches tonight than he was against the Yankees the other day. He had the 10 strikeouts against the Yankees and also the five walks. Tonight it's four strikeouts and one walk. And that walk came around to score. And he walked Gutierrez to lead off the third inning. And the Astros scored two. The count is one ball and one strike on Moisa Salou. Moises Rojas Alou fouls it away. Check out our Wendy's trivia question tonight brought to you by Wendy's old fashioned hamburgers where quality is our recipe who hit the most home runs in New York City. Willie Mickey the Duke or none of the above. In New York City. OK. You have a thought right off the top of your head. No, there's nothing on the top of your head, huh? <laughs> Fly ball toward right. Ramirez on the move again toward the line and tracks it down. Let's take off right now with Continental Airlines around the majors. Grant Brown on the DL. He injured himself yesterday trying to make a play in center field. Kevin Ory is back up from Iowa. He had been down because the guy that took his spot has been doing a good job. And honorary all-star captains are Vera Clemente. Roberto Clemente's wife and Lee McPhail and Jeff Nelson goes on the DL for New York. The Battle of New York is tied at one in the fifth inning tonight. It's two to one Houston. Strike is called to Everett who has struck out twice tonight. And Bartola has pitched this guy very tough. Strike two. Oh and two. Now, nice. if you're ever you're thinking, okay, now he's going to go back upstairs with that high heat, huh? Well, there you go. That was a 98 mile an hour fastball on the outside edge, and why not? Just keep it right there and go upstairs a little bit. Not quite. Well, this is the part of the game where Bartolo gets tough. When you look at his last three starts in the last three innings. The opposition is one for 28 against Bartolo Colon, and that is an 0-36 batting average. It's two balls, two strikes. There you see the difference in the ERA. They're all pretty good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's just that he gets a lot tougher, seven through nine. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Strikes him out for the third time. Carl Everett's probably seen enough of Bartolo Colon. Yeah, he's going to be glad uh, he doesn't have to face him anymore this season. He has just been basically all hard stuff. Has shown him a couple off speed pitches, but that was it, and he just overmatched. 98 miles an hour. Strike is called to Dave Clark, who is 0 for 2. He popped up twice once to short and once to first. Five hits for the Houston Astros, and they lead it two to one. This one is popped foul out of play. And by the way, our cameras, you can't get anything by our cameras. Exclusive footage of Jarrett Wright without his cap 
during warmups and there is the new do for Jarrett Wright which prompts the next online question for Rick is it true that you're going to go to that style probably by the time we're in Milwaukee next week well I may wait till all-star break okay I've got my appointment and may I may not go that light high and away for a ball you know who says he's going to do it on Monday yeah Charlie Charles Nagy says he will get the blonde look on Monday we'll see I want to check with Jackie first before he does that don't you think no, it'll be too late. <laughs> get <laughs> get so. it done. Monday's the off day. You can afford to get it done. Inside. Count evens out at two balls, two strikes. Two outs, bases empty. The Indians have turned in a couple of double plays behind Bartolo tonight. A 4-6-3 and a 5-4-3 around the horn. Two balls, two strikes on Clark. Indians down by a run here in the top of the seventh inning. Strike three, number six for Cologne. We'll move to the bottom of the seventh. They can stand and stretch. The Indians need a run. Seventh inning, the seventh inning stretch, and pitcher number three for Larry Durker in the Astros. A right-hander this time, Reggie Harris, coming on out of the bullpen. The 29-year-old right-hander signed a minor league contract with the Astros in January of this year. Pitched last year for Philadelphia, 50 games for the Phillies. A one and three record. There you see his numbers from this year. Well, he was uh, called up from Triple A New Orleans on uh, June 16th. It was after they placed left-hander Mike Hampton on the disabled list. Hampton, a very good starter for them. See the numbers for Harris. So Durker going to his third pitcher of the evening for the top of the lineup. One inning of relief for Nitkowski gave up a hit and a walk and stranded both runners. So Harris. We'll take over a non roster player in spring training. A cousin of uh, Del Curry who plays in the NBA. He lives in Waynesboro Virginia and is a big NASCAR racing fan as is Rick Manning. Facing the top of the order now. Marvis Kell takes a strike and Omar tonight is one for two. Scored the Indians run back in the third inning. The Indians have had lots of chances tonight. Just two for 11 with runners in scoring position and they have stranded eight. This Cal checks his swing and it's one and one. It's like Charlie and Mike talking about Harris the pitcher going over their scouting reports on how they want to try and approach him. Vizquel with a fly ball to left field. Moisa Salou moves in just a bit and retires Omar. Let's answer the Wendy's trivia question for tonight. With the most home runs in New York City, Willie, Mickey, the Duke, or none of the above? I'll go with none of the above. All right, I'll take Mickey. How about Mel Ott? Babe Ruth was second. 348 home runs in New York City. Dunstan is two for three. The Indians need to get something going. He went around for strike one. No balls and one strike. Dunstan facing this right hander for the second time. His average at 227. So the two for three has lifted at 10 points tonight. The Indians about hit the Astros seven to five. But Houston leads it two to one. It's the last thing he wants to see. Two nights ago, the same thing happened. He had a pitch up and in like that. And two pitches later, he took one on the forearm. Fastball up and in, running in. That'll get you out of your toe hold in a hurry, won't it? Sure will. Get your heart beating a little faster, too, won't it? One out, nobody on. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning. There's a line drive into left center field. Dunstan picks up hit number three, and he's thinking about two. Finally puts the brakes on. Now he's got to hustle back. 
skips away. Now he's going to try to go to second. Bagwell tracks it down, throws, and he's dead. I'll tell you, that guy is unbelievable. He comes out of the batter's box thinking double. He was halfway to second base as he rounded first and almost forced Gutierrez at short to throw behind him. As he does, and Dunson goes back in the first, the ball hits off his body, I think, and gets away from Bagwell and enables him to get to second base. That's just pure hustle. Look at this. He's thinking two right there. Yeah, he doesn't even look up. Now he peeks. He sees the bag. He sees he's got the ball coming in. All right, puts on the brakes, hurry back, come back, and the ball hits him in the shoulder, and it deflects away, enables him to get to second base. That's just great hustle for Sean Dunstan. Now that is the tying run in scoring position for a chance for Ramirez and Tommy to get it home. So it's a hit and on the throw, an error. Error on the shortstop, I would imagine. So Dunstan, with nobody out, gets himself into scoring position. Now the Indians have had this set up before tonight and have not been able to capitalize. So let's see what they can do now in the seventh inning as Ramirez one for two with an RBI and a walk, and the Indians a, a chance to tie the ball game up again. Boy, if you can teach any young kids how to run the bases, just look what Sean Dunstan did right there. And take double out of the box and make the defense hold you to one. That's terrific. He forced the issue. Yes, he did, and that's why he got the extra base. In too tight to Manny. One ball, no strikes. Well, and Dunson responded to that pitch that was up and in off Harris and promptly came back out and hit a line drive, and that's how you answer those pitches as they hit him. He is at second base with nobody out. The crowd's night, the 250th consecutive sellout, 43,222. They want something to happen right now. Ramirez takes a strike. It's one and one. Took something off that pitch and got it in for strike one. It was a good slider. After that pitch up and in, you'll see it going right down. Bottom of the seventh inning tonight. The wind continues to blow toward the right field corner. Ramirez trying to zero in on Harris, facing him for the first time. Pitcher number three used by the Astros. Shurik threw over 100 pitches in five innings. Nikowski pitched the sixth, and now here in the seventh, it's Harris. Ramirez with a ground ball, hits it hard to short. They've got Dunstan hung up, and he's going to be out. Sean broke and had no chance, so he's erased. Well, now that is a mistake by Sean Dunn. You see him shaking his head. He had that secondary lead and then realized where the shortstop was, playing Manny to pull. And Biggio at second base, it's an easy out. And it takes your in scoring position. It takes the runner in scoring position out of there. And Larry Durker is going to go to the mound and I'm sure bring in one of the four left-handers that he has available. So Dunstan gets himself put out at second base. That's going to do it for Harris. The pitching change will come here in the uh, bottom of the seventh inning. Magnani will come on when we come back with more Indians baseball on Fox Sports Ohio. Comes on to take over another left hander the third one used by Larry Durker who has not been shy at all or bashful about going to that bullpen Harris pitches two thirds of an inning he's responsible for the runner at first as he turns it over to Magnetti. Well he has been playing mat matchups Magnate coming on for the 26th time three and two record with a save and a 583 earned run average no stranger to the Indians. He has pitched for different organizations I remember with Kansas City. But as we all know, left-handers can get around. Well, he was with the Kansas City Royals through most of the 90s, kind of up and down between Kansas City and Omaha. And then signed as a free agent following the 95 season. And you know, we have a moment we want to remind you that the next game on Channel 43 will be the finale of the series in the homestand at 1 o'clock for WUAB. Jack and Mike going to work in the series finale. Magnati is now 33 years old. Started last year at AAA and eventually pitched in 40 games for the Houston Astros. He had been with Kansas City through 96 and then signed as a free agent following that 96 season. Tommy is one for seven against Mike Magnetti. 
Runner at first and two outs. He takes the first pitch for a strike. Only struck out twice tonight. Hit the ball hard once back in the third inning. He hit a wicked line drive that one hop Gutierrez and bounced to Biggio who threw him out. And they continue to put the shift on for Jim Tomey. The outfield is uh, fairly straight away and very deep. It's one and one. See the big hole at shortstop. Three infielders on the right hand side. Figuring if he, Jimmy's going to pull it, he will definitely pull it on the ground, and the outfield is straight away. He went around for strike two. That's one and two. They've worked Tommy over pretty well, good they so have far. Had him tied up tonight. You're right. They pushed him very well. You'll see they got him looking away, and that's not a typical Jim Tommy swing. He's thinking maybe trying to pull a baseball. He's stepping out now to regroup. Sandy Alomar is on deck, hoping that Jim Tomey can keep this seventh inning going, a two to one Houston lead. Runner goes, the pitch is a ball. There's the throw to second, and in safely with a stolen base is Ramirez. So the time run in scoring position as Manny picks up his fourth steal. He's yet to be caught this season. Well, and they've done this with two outs tonight. They have sent the runners. They're going on first movement. That's a sign that Mike Hargrove gives them the bench. Manny cruises in, fourth steal, without being caught. Now in scoring position. Second stolen base for the Indians tonight. Vizquel had one in the third, and he came around to score the only run for the Indians tonight. Two to Tommy. It's full at three and two. And with the uh, shortstop playing so close to second base, it'll be tough for Manny to get much of an extended lead there. Well, one thing that the Houston infielders have done tonight, I don't care who's hitting, they've really pinched the middle and kept that guy at second base close. But with two outs, he will be taking off on anything put into play by Tommy. You see, Gutierrez is actually closer to second base than Manny is. Ball four. So the lefty comes on and walks the lefty. And now it'll be Sandy Alomar coming up. That leaves Larry Durker shaking his head just a bit. Much easier in the booth, wasn't it, Larry? The lefties didn't walk lefties. Well, <laughs> you know, if it comes up and he plays his matchups like, as he has to this point, it's worked very well. He would have liked Magnetti to retire Jim Tomey, especially when he had him down in the count. Jimmy was able to lay off of a couple of sliders. Now Sandy Alomar is four for eight against this left-hander. And again, the Indians with a chance to take the lead. They've got a runner in scoring position for the 12th time tonight. We'll have a chance to drive him home. But the Astros in these situations tonight have made their pitches. Alomar fouls the first pitch off. see the numbers for Alomar against Magnetti. Sandy is 0 for 3, lined out to third, struck out swinging, and flight out to right. And the Indians need some two-out lightning. Fans here know it. Trying to get this bottom of the seventh going with two outs. It's been Cologne all the way for the Indians. One and one. But Durker now has used four different pitchers, three lefties and the right-hander against the Indians. But you don't have to worry about a shortage. He's got seven guys in the bullpen. Well, there you go. But the Indians, as you mentioned, have had their opportunities. They just have not been able to get that big hit. And, you know, it's just a matter of time. You keep getting runners on board. Sooner or later, someone's going to get one. Alomar fouls another pitch off. It's one and two. You see Magnetti wearing two knee braces. On the pitcher's mound. So he has had knee problems, and there you'll see him through the uniform. Protects both knees. Well, he's had one knee operation, that one in 1990 when it ended his season in June. So obviously he's had his share of knee problems. The so one two pitch. Hit into right center field. It's got a chance to get down, and it will. One run is in. Tommy will be held to third. Alomar gets the double. The Indians get even. Just out 
out of the reach of a diving Derek Bell. Time ball game. That's all it took was the one hit. Sandy stayed back. After they came inside, realizing they may go back away, he stayed back nicely and found the gap out in right center field. Derek Bell trying to make a diving catch just under his glove. That was a good pitch. Look at Sandy go down and get that baseball. Doesn't really drive it, and you'll see Bell diving for it. It allows Ramirez to score. Tony could not come around to score. You see Newman holding him up, but we do have a tie ball game. And with two runners in scoring position, the Indians finally get that big two-out base hit. David Justice now to face Magnati. He has not faced this left-hander before. First pitch is ball one. Magnati giving up the walk to Tomey and then had to face the right hand hitting Alomar. Sandy dropped the double into right center field. Ninth hit for the Indians tonight. It's a 2 2 ball game. David rolls it foul into the Houston dugout. It evens out at one and one. Well, it took them into the seventh inning, Rick, but they finally got that big two-out base hit. Now, a lot of times we've seen this Indian club, when they do get that big hit, it seems like it just opens the floodgates sometimes. They continue to roll. Justice, two strikeouts and a double, and he almost threw that one past Brad Osmus. Well, he picks this slider that's in the dirt down and away. That's how he gets that body out front. He made a nice job of picking that ball cleanly. The Indians now three for 13 and with runners in scoring position tonight. The count is two and one on Justice. Fouls it off. It's two and two. Shurik went five, Nitkowski one inning, Harris two thirds of an inning, and Magnati is yet to retire a batter. And earlier in the ball game, Tim on the right field bullpen had a lot of company. All the Astros were sitting up there, but now the seats are empty. They're down in the the bench in the dugout area, ready to go to work because obviously uh, Larry Durker is going to use them. Here's the two-two. Just does stay alive. Boy, lucky to get a piece of this ball. It was an excellent pitch. A slider down and away. Just gets a piece of it. Fouls it off his body. Bounce back up and hit him in the leg. Two balls, two strikes. A pack pounce to Jacobs Field. Hoping the Indians can take the lead in the bottom of the seventh inning. That's low. Three and two. Call me the runner at third. He walked. Sandy Alomar down at second, doubled home the tying run. The Indians have nine hits, but it's a 2-2 ball game. A good spot for David to break out of that home run drop, wouldn't it? Yes, it will. He tried the same thing with Tommy and ended up walking him because Jimmy laid off the sliders away. 3-2 pitch to David Justice. He went the other way with it, and then lashes it foul. Still 3-2. did have Doug Henry, a right-hander, warming up in the bullpen. The Indians' bullpen has been quiet. Bartolo Colon has given up just five hits in seven innings tonight. Finds himself locked in a 2-2 ball game with the Astros, the battle of central division leaders in interleague play. Ball four, bases loaded. Henry is up again as the pitching coach Vern Rule goes to the mound to talk to Magnati who has walked to and given up a double. Still yet to retire a batter. He's ready to go. He's just waiting for the call but Vern Rule won't make the call. He's just going to go out and say come on this is going to be your last hitter. Mark Whitten is one for three against Magnati. He will of course turn around and bat right handed. Mark is 0 for two. He's grounded out twice to short and walked. The Indians have the bases loaded for the second time tonight. 
in the first inning, three guys batted with the bases loaded and all came up empty. Tommy struck out, Alomar lined out to third, and Justice struck out. So another chance for the Tribe with the bases juice. The pitch to Whitman. Strike one is called. Whitten has walked a couple of times in facing Magnati, and as I mentioned, one for three. Good to have you with us on Fox Sports Ohio tonight. Strike two. A couple of fastballs that he does not pull the trigger on. Must have been sitting for the breaking ball. 86 miles per hour. Inside. Whitten does have four grand slams in his career. Indians with just like a base hit. Oh, that was close. But it's one and two. Magnati has walked the two lefties he's faced in the inning. The tying run was charged to Harris. That takes Shurik out of the picture. And Magnati becomes the pitcher of record. Ground ball, left side, base hit. One run is in. Here comes Alomar. He will score. So the Indians do come up with the clutch hits in the inning and take the lead 4-2. to two. Witten delivers a two-out, two-run base hit. Boy, Mark Witten went out there and got that ball. He hits a good pitch down and gets it by Spires at third base with two outs. Alomar, a good jump at second base. That plates Tommy, plates Sandy. And Mark Winton with the clutch base hit. So now the Indians get on the board with some two-out lightning. And I told you, once they get that first one, it seems like everybody else relaxes. And it's now 4-2 Indians. And Witten picks up RBIs 13 and 14. Magnani still has not retired a batter. Two of the runs are charged to him. He's walked two and given up two hits. Fryman got a base hit his last time up. Travis is one for two. Also been hit by a pitch. Take strike one. Remember, it was strike two to Witten, and he battled back and got the base hit through the left side, just out of the reach of a diving Bill Spires. That's right there. An 0 2 pitch, awfully close yeah, on the inside close. corner. Then he hits a good pitch down in the strike zone for the base hit. The Indians now with 10 hits. strikes. That was the same count that Witten was facing when he got the base hit, so Travis Fryman has to regroup and go back to work here. In the bottom of the seventh inning, the Indians scored three times to take the lead. Are the career numbers, one home run for Fryman against Magnetti. Two for six. The home run, the only RBI that he's picked up against this left-hander. 0-2 oh the count. Struck him out. The inning is over, but the Indians score three times, and after seven, take the lead. We are ready now. Under just a slice of a moon for the top of the eighth inning, the Indians have juggled their outfield a little bit. Now that they have the lead, Kenny Lofton was given the night off, but uh, not the complete night because he is now in center field. Well, you get the lead, you put in your best defense. Mark Witten had been in center, and he is still in the ballgame. He just moved a little bit the other way, and he's now the left fielder. As Dunstan is out of the lineup. It'll be Gutierrez, Osmus, and Biggio to face the right-hander Bartolo Colon, who now has a 4-2 to two lead. Swing and a miss, and this is the part of the ballgame where he has really gotten tough. And does with a 96 mile an hour fastball to Gutierrez. He's walked and scored and flight out to deep right. Lost his bat, heads up, it skips into the seats. Strike two. Boy, deflected. It looks like everybody's all right. That lady caught it. She's got it. She's taking a bow. Just to flex off the top of the dugout and just ricochets in. And thankfully, Nobody uh, got hurt with that. She's 
got a brand new bat, or maybe a partially used well, bat. You can see everybody in that section. They're telling you how they got out of the way of it. No balls, two strikes. Gutierrez leading off the top of the eighth inning. The Indians on top now by two, leading for the first time tonight. Fouled away. It remains no balls, two strikes. Well, the you know, you come to the ballpark, you think you're hoping to get a foul ball. You never know you're going to get a foul bat. <laughs> the Indians now get their bullpen up and working behind Bartolo Colon. Checking in with Matt Underwood one more time in this inning. Oh, and to the count. The Indians now have 10 hits in this ball game. High and away. And the Astros had the lead most of the night. After they scored their two runs in the third, they made it stand up until the Indians scored three times in the seventh inning. Finally, getting some big two out base hits, and the count remains a ball and two strikes. Bartolo not messing around, is he? He's just rearing back and throwing the heat. Now the Indians do have the lefty righty combination working in the bullpen behind him. Shuley, who came on to get McGuire last night, and Ossenmacher. This will be pitch number 90 coming up for Bartolo Colon, who shakes off one and is now ready to go with a 1 2 pitch. He, he senses it, boy. I'm telling you, 99 miles an hour. He hasn't thrown a pitch like that all night. But this young man, I'm telling you, some kind of strong once he, he smells it around the seventh inning. Something kicks inside of him. But a pretty good battle being put up here by Gutierrez as he's fouled off some high fastball. He wants to get a good feel going to his mouth off of the mound, which you can do. Yes, you can't be on the dirt part of the mound doing that. He says, well, I want to get a good grip and throw it 100 and get it by him. <laughs> well, he's trying. Two balls, two strikes. But the battle continues. And the Indians finally got a big two out RBI double from Sandy Alomar and then a with the bases loaded Mark Whitten delivered a two out two run base hit breaking through against the Houston bullpen scoring against Harris and Magnati and Magnati is now the pitcher of record for the Astros. Another one foul. I think pretty good approach there by Gutierrez. He's not trying to do too much with those pitches that he really can't handle. He's just putting them, putting the bat on the he's, ball and staying alive. He's doing a nice job of just trying to put the ball in play. You don't have to swing too hard against Bartolo. No, that's, that's <laughs> what you have to do is put a short, quick swing on him. Two balls, two strikes. Another one foul back. Four foul balls now on the 2 2 count. I think Bartolo had an inning where he threw less pitches than the hitter. I think you're right. Trying to dispose of the first hitter. In the top of the eighth inning, the Indians now leading by a pair. And this one has bounced foul again. So that's five consecutive 2 2 pitches that have been fouled off. Check out our Lake Business RBI leaders here in the top of the eighth inning. Juan Gonzalez now has 94 as he picked up another one last night. McGuire with 84. And then Sosa. You know, he'd have to have some RBIs, as many home runs as he's been hitting, huh? Yes. The battle continues, two and two. Gutierrez trying to get something going against Bartolo Colon here in the eighth. And that's six straight foul balls. Oh, this kid is really battling Bartolo. Look at Sandy's starting to say something to him now. He said, why don't you just put it in play? Yeah, hit it straight <laughs> for a change. He's smiling. <laughs> Sandy going to take a little stroll out. Well, the Cleveland Indian team shops have a wide array of merchandise for fans of all ages. There's a convenient Indian team shop near you, including Belden Village Mall in Canton, Gray Lakes Mall in Menor, and South Park Center in Strongsville. Well, let's take a look at what has been a 12-pitch at-bat so far on supervision. A lot of high heat 
off the arm of Cologne, but he's not been able to finish the job. The max 99 and one at 85. Everything else in the 90s, the high 90s. Full count, three and two. Finally went with a breaking ball and missed low and away. Well, this has been a good battle. Another one fouled out of play. And he has thrown 14 pitches to Gutierrez. And the Indians protecting a two run lead now in the top of the eighth inning, but uh, Gutierrez is making Bartolo Colon earn it here in the eighth inning. Oh, man. I mean, it's not like this kid, look at Bartolo's got a smile on now, saying, holy smokes, this guy wants to get on base. Look at this. <laughs> this is great stuff right here. Well, that is uh, eight pitches that he's fouled off since it went to two and two. Ten fouls total in this at bat. Yeah, this guy's not fouling off like uh, 85, 90 mile an hour fastballs. They're 98, 99. The last one was 99. The Indian fans now trying to get behind Bartolo Colon and see if he can finish this guy off. We'll all be tired by the time this at bat is over. Another one fouled back. I'll tell you, whoever wins this battle, you better tip your hat. Either the pitcher Bartolo will tip his, or Ricky Gutierrez is going to tip his. Bartolo now at the 100 pitch mark. He was cruising up well, until he faced this guy. He's thrown this guy 17 pitches, and he still hasn't gotten him out. And remember, if he gets on, you bring the tying run to the plate. I think he the highest pitch count he had in any inning was 17 tonight. Well, 17 to one guy who's fouled off 11. Another one fouled off. <laughs> Look at now Bartolo is going in there. I'm sure he's saying something. Boy, this is some kind of battle between a pitcher and a hitter. You know, pretty soon on supervision, we'll just have a full white screen with baseballs that have been thrown in this at bat. <laughs> he has thrown a ton, wow. 18 pitches so far. 12 foul balls. Well, he keeps throwing a fastball. Try a changeup. <laughs> well, he did throw that one breaking ball on two and two, and that got it to three and two. This is unbelievable. 19 pitches, 13 I, foul balls. I don't think I've seen a battle like this ever. I cannot remember it. Well, let's look at this mess on supervision. Looks like a video arcade. This has been some kind of battle. The Indians pitchers in the bullpen are ready. They're just standing on the mound watching. Well, they want to watch this. This is a, a great confrontation. Down the right field line. Ramirez toward the corner. <laughs> it's foul. What else? Watch these two when they go by each other. They've got to look at Bartolo. <laughs> he has thrown 20 pitches to Gutierrez, and he has fouled off 14 of them. Don't you know he was hoping that ball would stay in play long enough for Ramirez to get to it? He could not. This is going to turn into a sitcom now. Half hour. Now well, let's see what happens on this 3-2 pitch. Something's got to get sooner or later. He strikes him out. I got to get up. Yeah, that was ever believable. <laughs> Finally, he won with the two seamer. 21 pitches later. What a battle. I'll tell you what, the fans are standing. That was terrific. Bartolo finally wins it. Boy, you got to tip your hat to Gutierrez. Swings and misses. An unbelievable at bat. 21 pitches. It took 10 minutes to retire Gutierrez. I'm tired from watching. Wow. 
Now it's Brad Osmus. Ball one to him. I was kind of hoping Brad would hit the first pitch. I was going to say he's allowed to throw a ball there. Well, he threw 21 pitches, did not walk him. One and one the count. After he fouled off 14 balls. That's the most I've seen anybody this year and anybody in a long time. Strike two to Austin. And he's still bringing it up there pretty good. That was 94 miles an hour. I'm, I'm really amazed at how he kept his composure out there and is able to just come right back. One and two the count. Foul back. Let's don't fact, start that again. I wish we were doing the game tomorrow because Doug would have a whole three game show and one at bat. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing we don't have tribe take two tomorrow because what we'd have is basically him batting. Maybe show the runs and then a <laughs> 10 minute at bat. One and two the count. Fouled it out of play. Still a ball of two strikes. Lost in all of this is the fact that Cologne now has struck out the last three batters that he's faced and has seven punch outs on the night. We go back to the numbers that you were talking about earlier in the ballgame from the fifth inning on. They have only gotten one hit. That was the leadoff single by Spires in the sixth inning. No, they do not have a hit. In his last three innings of pitching, a bouncer to Priman, who finally gets some activity for the second out. One more time to visit with our good friend Matt Underwood. Well, John, earlier in the ball game, you had a visit from that guy, Slider, up in the booth. But I want to introduce you to Slider's group here. They call him the Fun Bunch. It's a brand new addition to Slider this year at the ballpark. Collectively, they're like baseball's version of Dennis the Menace. They're slinging hot dogs into the crowd. They're, they're doing tumbling exercises. They're dancing on top of the dugout. And uh, what else do you guys do here? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Matt. <laughs> Poor Joe has to put up with all that. Following Matt all over the place. Two outs, nobody on. Top of the order. Biggio, one for three. Takes a strike. He drove in the first Houston run back in the third inning, then erased on a double play that produced run number two. And that's been it against Cologne. Bouncing ball. Priman is there to take that one hopper. That'll do it. Hats off to Cologne. He stayed through it. <laughs> he smiles as he's got the lead. Well, this is the reaction for Bartolo Cologne as he wins the battle. The 20 pitch battle retires the side in order <laughs> and heads to the dugout. What a terrific effort by that 23 year old. 112 pitches for Bartolo Colon, including 20 to one man. Look at they want to talk about. It. He says, "I need a breather." David Bell will face pitcher number five for the Astros. They go back to another left-hander. This time it's Trevor Miller coming on to face Bell, and he pops the first pitch up down the first baseline. Bagwell in foul territory. One pitch and one out. This is the numbers on Trevor Miller. 21st game he has appeared in a 2 0 record. 326 earned run average with a save. You're right. They have a steady flow of left handers well, coming out of the bullpen. You haven't seen them all. Billy Wagner's out there, too. So they have four left handed pitchers in the bullpen and three right handers. In the bullpen now, the Indians make the change looking ahead to the ninth inning, possibly. As Vizquel bats and the closer, Mike Jackson, begins to loosen up. Vizquel with a fly ball to shallow left field. Coming in is Alou. Second straight time he has retired Vizquel. Let's check out our Lowe's nose this day in Major League Baseball history. A game against the White Sox. Uh, the Indians had numbers on their sleeves. The first time players were identified by numbers back in 1916. So Kenny Lofton, who had the night off, came on to play defensively in the eighth inning. That's for the first time. Adding in 
Sean Dunstan's spot in the batting order with Manny Ramirez to follow. The Indians scored three times in the seventh to take the lead. And he had 279, seven homers, 41 runs batted in. Ball one to him. Look at what Cologne has done tonight, and I'm kind of thinking he's probably done for the evening. Uh, innings one through four, Houston was four for 15. Innings five through eight, they were one for 10. And that has certainly that's, been his pattern. That's how it has been all year. You're exactly right. Lofton replacing Sean Dunstan, who had his first three hit game as an Indian tonight. Lofton goes the other way. Alou had him played that way, and it's out of play. So the advanced scouts know that the book on Lofton is against lefties. He will try to stay back and go the other way. Alou was definitely cheating toward that left field line. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, bases empty. In the bottom half of inning number eight, the Indians trying to make it six straight for the third time this season. And hand the Astros their third consecutive loss. A bouncer to third. Played there by Spires. The throw is low, and Lofton beats it. He got a piece of Bagwell going by, but Lofton hustling down that line beats it out. And watch where Bill Spires, when he fields his ball, looks like he did not get a good grip on it. So he keep getting it out of the glove, and I think that's why the ball was low. And that back arm of Bagwell, Kenny coming down over the bag, hits it. And really, I don't know if it caught his knee right there, right at the back of the elbow. Put a stinger in there. Now he's gotten another throw that was high and in toward the runner that on the bunt by Sean Dunstan, a throw from Spires. And Dunstan wound up getting a base hit on that play. Lofton gets an infield hit on this one as he hustles down the line and beats it out. Brings up Ramirez, who tonight is one for three. As an RBI. The only Indian that this left-hander Trevor Miller has faced is not in the lineup, Pat Borders. Miller turned 25 right at the end of May. That is lined into the glove of the third baseman Spires. Makes the play, ends the inning. We go to the ninth. The Indians leading four to two. Fantastic, outstanding, exciting. Yes, it has been that so far tonight. Quite a ball game, and Houston has a problem because they come to bat in the ninth inning. Down by two, they'll send up the heart of the order here. Hitters two, three, and four. Spires, Bell, and Bagwell, and I'm sure that Ossenmacher is on to face just the left-hander. Houston, we have a problem. The Ameritech call to the bullpen has been made, and here's Ossie. Ball appearing for the 36th time, 2-4 and four record, 351 earned run average. And you're absolutely right. He's on to face Bill Spires if he hits, and it looks like they're going to have a pinch Sean hitter. Barry is loosening up to come to the plate. You know, Durker not afraid to go to the bullpen. He's not afraid to go to the bench. And he brings on Sean Barry to bat for Bill Spires. Barry will lead off against Ossenmacher. Well, another great performance tonight by Bartolo. Outstanding. Colon. Eight it's innings, five hits, seven strikeouts, one walk, two earned runs. So he continues his brilliant pitching. We're going to update his stats and his numbers when we have a chance to show you exactly what he has done. By the way, that battle of New York between the ERA leaders, right now the Mets have a 4-3 to three lead over the Yankees in the seventh inning. The first pitch to Barry is a ball. Barry one for one against Austin Mocker. Two balls and no strikes. Cincinnati held off Detroit, winning four to three tonight. Goes back to the screen, and Ossenmacher's not come close so far. 
Kansas City beginning to do some work on the Cubs. They lead it five to three in the uh, sixth inning. Minnesota leads the Cardinals two to nothing in the sixth inning. White Sox leading the Brewers one nothing. There's a strike. That ball game is in the seventh. McCray and Alfonso have hit home runs tonight for the Mets as they do lead the Yankees four to three in the seventh inning. Drive toward left field. The Witten is back near the track. Makes the throw. He drops the ball. He got there, could not hang on. So Barry hustles into second base. We'll see how they score that. Ball was hit hard, but Witten got there. Well, he had a beat on it. I don't know if this ball coming down had top spin or what. He comes back. He realized he had room to the track, and it looked like it hit him in the heel of the glove and just popped out. It's an error on Witten in left field. My car goes to the mound. Ossenmacher gives up the base runner, but it should have been out number one. So some work to be done by Mike Jackson. He will come on and take the place of uh, Paul Ossenmacher when we come back with more from Jacobs Field. The Indians error charged to the left fielder Mark Witten. Gives the Astros a start to the top of the ninth as Mike Jackson now comes on out of the bullpen. Bartolo Colon has been brilliant in his last four starts. He's pitched 34 innings, given up 18 hits, just three earned runs, and he has an 0.79 ERA. Giving up the two runs tonight, and his ERA drops a couple more points to 2.51 as Jackson comes on for the 35th time. Well, Mike going to be looking for save number 17. Tying run now with the air comes to home plate. Bell will be the first to bat. Derek is one for six against Jackson. Derek tonight 0 for three. He's grounded out to second base, struck out, and hit into a double play. Hits a two hopper to this scale. Bare hand deep at short, and they got him. What a great play. Unbelievable. I thought Omar was going to go to the glove hand, but he did not do it. This ball has top spin on it. This is just phenomenal. Just take a look at it. Amazing. That is just un got it. That's unbelievable. People, they do not realize how tough it is when that ball's got spin on it to catch it in a fair hand. It, that is unbelievable to get the first out. And the fans, you see many of them standing. They appreciate the outstanding play by Vizquel on the play. Barry has to stay at second base. So Bagwell comes on, and Bagwell's had good success against Jackson. He's 4 for 11 with a home run. He's also struck out three times. Jeff doubled in the second inning, but was stranded at third. He takes ball one. He was retired on a good play in the hole on the left side by Vizquel in the fourth and then flied out to center field in the sixth inning. One out and one on. We're in the top of the ninth inning. The Indians trying to make it six straight victories and open up this weekend series with a win. There's a strike at one and one as they meet the Astros for the first time this season. What a good hard slider here by Mike Jackson. He Bagwell wanted to start but held up as he saw the ball breaking away. One one pitch. Full foul. I'm unable to get to it because he's playing in that direction here. If he gets a base hit and sends a run home fine, but you well, don't want him in scoring position. Absolutely. Protect the doubles. You give the singles. One and two the count. Moises salute to follow. We're in the ninth inning. High fly ball left field. Witten is back. Has room at the track. Two outs. This ball game should be over. Well, let's take a look right now at our Fox Sports News primetime headlines brought to you by the Ohio Lottery. The uh, home run watch continues. The Subway Series is underway in New York. And some upsets at Wimbledon. All of that coming up when we are finished tonight. Alou will bat. He's one for three. 
Glad you could stay up and stay with us tonight on Fox Sports Ohio. And you can see the fans are ready to celebrate a victory. If Jackson can get a lose. Strike one. Alou one for seven against Mike Jackson. The Indians tonight celebrating their 250th consecutive sellout, 43,222. And Alomar wants to talk to Jackson. It's been a great ball game, hasn't it? Yes, it really has. It's been a well-played ball game. Houston pitching staff did a terrific job up until the seventh when they gave out that Sandy Alomar got the clutch two-out base hit, and then Mark Witten followed. And that's when they put a three spot on the board, but the Indians pitching has been terrific. A bouncer foul, it's 0-2. And until this ninth inning, it's been Bartolo Colon against the Houston Astros staff. He faced five different pitchers in the ball game tonight. McManny and Colon are the pitchers of record, and Jackson trying to finish it off. Start a little weekend party in downtown Cleveland if he can do that. But Alou is always a threat. Took him out. The ball, oh, he got a piece of it. He, he did get a piece of it, and that ball hit the ground, and Sandy, that ball jumped down and could not hold on to it. It wouldn't have been a, it would have been a foul ball anyway. See, it hits the ground. Yep. Sandy could not quite dig it out. Oh, we'll do it again at 0-2. That's strike three. That's the ball game. The Indians win at the final tonight. The Indians four, the Astros two.